right. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ryan Nickel coming at you with a special edition of this uh, Bootstrap Live here. So we're going to talk about how to structure some skinny deals. And um, I got with me a guy who I just met virtually. Well, we, Kevin, when did we start chatting? Um, about 1 o'clock today. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think online it was over the weekend, wasn't it? Friday, uh, posted it on Facebook about skinny deals. Uh, so I wasn't able to get, get with you then, but uh, we were able to talk to Dave uh, to try to figure things out because I got a lot of complications. I'm new to the telephone and leave out like that. Right on. So I'll get out with about three days ago. Perfect. So um, I, let me see here if. Can you guys hear us okay? Looks like my, my camera's a bit glitchy, but I think that's all right. Go ahead and type in here and let us know if you can hear us. If you can hear me or if you can hear Kevin okay. And if so, then uh, we'll go ahead and rock and roll with this. Hey, thanks, Eric. I like this shirt, too. Bootstrap real estate investor. So I know there's a bit of a delay. Yeah, we got both of us. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, Kevin, why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit of background on this particular property? Um, what happened? Why you, you feel it, it did or didn't go well? And uh, then we'll go from there. Okay. First off, uh, I'm Kevin. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, my company name is, uh, is Trust Properties. I was a DBA company of uh, my, my parent company, and I got into uh, wholesaling about 16 months ago. So uh, I brought the local, local mentor who helped me with the property to learn how to do it. And then a uh, year later, about two months ago, I started I wanted to learn how to do a telephonic that so that way I can acquire property uh, without actually having to put any money down. So uh, with me having the, the driving termination that I have, uh, I decided uh, to, to research it and try to figure out how to do it on my own uh, because the mentor that I, I, I found locally, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of knowledge in it, so you know, I saw, saw help elsewhere. So the property in particular that Ryan here is talking about is uh, the third one that I attempted to complete, uh, but it fell through. Uh, the property is on the west side of town. Uh, its ARV is about 47000 Five hundred dollars. That, that's what I, I estimated that. Um, it doesn't need any work. Uh, and the seller, uh, the seller, they uh, a husband and wife couple. Uh, they had it had it uh, rented out for about two years, and here here lately it's been uh been empty, been vacant for about a year. Um, so my mentor, uh. He works alongside with them, and uh, he knew that I was uh, learning how to do the process of sell finance and lease option deals. So he came to me and he was like, he, he said, Kevin, I, I know you learned how to do the process. So what do, what do you think about this deal? And uh, so we made arrangements to meet at the property. Uh, this, was, this was over the course of about a week. And uh, I showed him to the property, and you know, I just took action. Uh, I tried my best to come to a negotiable terms uh, about the property, and she understood up front that I had to make money and bill, and that I was going to be self-letting self the property to a, to a third party. Um, so the terms we came to on the property was uh, $4,000 down, uh, $4,000 down, uh, a two, uh, $425 a month to, uh, to her. And... In that deal, I was going to be getting about $150 a month, something like that. Uh, so that was the back end. On the back end, uh, as far as the tenant buyer, uh, I think that's where I messed up at. But uh, he was going to be doing a $10,000 down payment. And of the $10,000 down, the, the seller she was going to receive $4,000, and I was going to get six. And I amortized it over. Uh, three years, and at the end of three years, I, I would receive another uh, uh, lump sum payment at the end of closing. 
and that thing was seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars. What I calculated uh, that I will receive at the end of the deal. All right, so good. These, these are all these are all good numbers. So, so I mean, on the surface, it looks like it's a pretty sweet deal. What happened? What where did it go wrong? Uh, what went wrong it was the amount of money that uh, the tenant, the tenant buyer would have to pay at the end of the deal. He wasn't he wasn't okay with that. So I told him. Uh, At the, end of, at the end of the three-year deal, he would have to pay, uh, from what I emphasize, is uh, thirty-nine thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. So you had a balloon he payment. Wasn't, he wasn't okay with it. Did they like so? There's a balloon payment. Yeah. Did yeah, you have ten thousand dollars in inflated price in it? Oh, okay, okay. So you amortized the ten thousand dollars over a certain amount of time. Uh huh. Because the, the mortgage, she always has a mortgage on the property. Now, with that seller, how many years is she allowing you to do this? Does she want the balloon payment, or did you impose the balloon payment? I added the, the balloon payment to it. And she was okay with me. She, uh, we came to agreement. We came to terms where she was, she was okay with me uh, doing, doing the deal for uh, six years. Okay. So, so where it went wrong, uh, the the end buyer, the tenant buyer, he said uh, that the payment would be too high in at the end. So I gave him an option to 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 do the lease again for another three years because I, I knew I had six years uh, for the contract. All right. Uh, so at the end of six years, at the end of six years, uh, okay, uh, fifteen thousand dollars. But he didn't want to do the deal. So that's how come it fell through. Just the numbers didn't work as far as what I started out with the seller. And then it, it didn't work with the tenant buyer because he wasn't willing to pay that amount of money. Well, I wouldn't either. Not like not like that. So let's go over some numbers here. And let's see how we can help you, okay? All right. So I'm just going to repeat back what I heard. And. So we got ARV is forty $47,500. Is that right? Okay, so we got ARV is $47,500. When she rented this out, how much did she rent it for? Are you still there, Kevin? When she was renting property, she rented it for seven fifty. Seven fifty, okay. And now, any any reason why this house has sat vacant for one year? I don't, because she tried to sell it in the amount of money that she wants to sell the property. That area doesn't go for that amount. Now wholesale, wholesale that area only sells, sells for about forty thousand dollars. A wholesale will sell for forty thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't she just come down seventy five hundred and just sell it? Uh, you'll, you'll get uh, better than mine, you know. So some people are real hard to deal with here. Okay. Regardless, so your ARV though, uh, hang on a second. So your wholesale properties will wholesale for forty thousand dollars, and yet this is only the ARV is only forty seven five. That doesn't make make sense on my end. Okay, I'm okay, so my, my question is is the after repair value on this property is forty seven thousand five hundred. How much? Yeah, how much do properties wholesale for in this in this area? Uh, what is wholesale? Uh, gotcha. All right. So she's asking retail to this property, and it's move-in ready, or does it need some kind of repairs? No repairs. They uh, they have just got to fix in the house. All right. So that's why she's trying to get get as much out of the property as possible. Okay, so she wants four thousand dollars down, and she's willing to do four twenty-five a month. 
Is that correct? Correct. Correct. That, that, that's, a, uh, that's a term that me and her came to for between me and her. All right. So question I have then is on those terms, uh, that 425, is that principal only payments or is that going to be uh, principal and interest or interest only? Uh, it's principal and interest because the mortgage, the mortgage payment is 280 and includes uh, principal and interest. Okay. So what I'm trying to figure out though is, so if she's asking forty seven five, she wants four thousand dollars down, that's leaving a balance left of forty three thousand five hundred. And so let's just do this. Forty three five amortized over thirty years with a monthly payment of four twenty five. It's going to give us an interest rate. <laughs> Ladies, I love this lady. 11.34% interest rate is what she's charging you, bro. Uh, yeah, there's. I, a, didn't, I didn't know you were doing over 30 years. Well, it doesn't matter. Regard, I mean, how much is she going to. So, okay, let's look at it differently then. Yeah. If it's a 43.5 and we're only doing six years uh -huh. and you have a four and a quarter per, uh, payment, it's still, uh, your, your, your monthly payment is um, four point, or $425 a month. Yeah, uh, to her, but you know, to really go to, uh, yeah, yeah. the way I'm going to do it. So check this out though. If it's a six year deal, um, which is it's 72 months, 43,500 and $425 a month comes out to being 10.9% interest. So, so here's, here's the deal on this one, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little law out there that someone may or may not know about. It's called Dodd-Frank. And Dodd-Frank says that uh, unless you're a lending institution and even then, anything over 10% is considered, is considered predatory. So whether she was going to amortize it over 30 years or amortize it over six years, anything above 10% is against the law. So that monthly payment, okay. that monthly payment, the way that she structured it, as innocent as it may be, doesn't work. Because also on top of that, you're going to go ahead and have to amortize this to get to that 750. You're going to probably like like be at 22 percent, man. I mean, you're you're loan shark in it. And so when you have this APR, it's completely, completely, completely like a big fat no no. So, but let's let's make this a win win. All right, let's let's structure this so that you're going to come out on top. She's going to come out on top, and the the buyer that's buying the property is going to come out on top. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Um, did the buyer have $4,000 to put down or did he have 5,000 or 6,000? Like how much does this buyer have to put down to play with? Well, I'm saying this long, so I'm not going to say the name, but, uh, it's, uh, real estate, uh, I've seen a lot of things, but this is the first time I've seen a guy coming up with uh, a, a shoebox full of money. And uh, it's a Mexican guy. Uh, He's a Mexican guy? Yeah, he told me it was $20,000 in the shoebox. $20,000 in the shoebox. I got to tell you this, Kevin. I, I, I've never seen a shoebox full of $20,000, but I have had guys come in with grocery bags full of money that smelled like weed, and it was about $45,000. <laughs> so... Wow. And, and, and I have a lot of, uh, yo hablo espanol, so I speak Spanish. I have a lot of Hispanics or Mexicans or everyone to say it that buy my houses and they buy them cash. They put down huge cash payments on it. And I love these guys because they always pay on time. So if you still have this guy's information, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the way I'm going to structure this for you right now, you can call that guy up today and say, hey, I got a deal for you. And it's going to work for everybody involved. 
All right. So, so let me ask. What was that? All right. Let me put everyone on pause. So while we're waiting for Kevin, how's this, guys? You guys getting a lot of value here? Anything you want me to ask him? Anything you need to learn? I feel like filling filling the gaps here. We're not quite done yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really explode this one for you. Okay, I'm glad to do that as well. You're gonna do what? Okay. All right. Yeah, I can hear you. So I'm gonna rewrite this. And by the way, um, everyone on this, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna post my notes here so you can get that. Kevin, you're gonna get this as well. Well, I guess I gotta call him back. Let's have some fun with this. All right, so I just shared the answer with everyone. Did you get it? Yeah, I just I just shared the solution with everybody. Did you did you get it? Let me clear it back. Yeah, I just I just shared the solution with everybody. Did you get it? <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, Kevin. <laughs> Were you replaying it and listening to it? <laughs> No, my, my phone dropped the call, man. I'm just messing with you. Having a good time. All right. So you ready for this can one? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Are you there? Oh, you got to love AT&T. Okay, Kevin, are you there? My phone always just drops these calls, man. You there? All right, yeah, that's my phone, man. AT&T does not like me sharing this information. It's top secret. All right, so let's work this out so it's a win for everybody. So how much does she owe on the property? She owes $39,214.60. Uh, That's thirty nine thousand. So three that three nine two zero fourteen, or whatever. Three nine two one four sixty six. All right, we're just gonna call it for round. We're gonna use round numbers. I'm gonna say thirty nine thousand two hundred. And her her payment is how much a month? What's her monthly payment? Can you still hear me? <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Yeah. Thank you, AT and T. Things about. This like seriously happens. Like I'm talking to a seller. They call me up like, hey, I got a house. You want to buy it? I'm like, yeah, what's your address? Beep, beep, beep. I'm like, what? Happens all the time. I'm like seriously at a point now where at and needs to just like shove it. I'm done. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, my phone's going to, my phone is going to keep, keep on doing this. So okay, what? $39,214.60. All right, monthly payment? $280.39. All right, we'll just call it $280. Just keep it, keep it clean. Okay. So it, it's ARV, or she wants to sell it basically at, at $47.5, whether that's the ARV or not. That's what she's selling it to you as? Yes. Okay, cool. 
And when she was renting it, it was renting for seven fifty. Correct. Brilliant here. And she wants four thousand dollars down. Correct. All right. So this is how we're going to structure this. So first what we need to do is what is the difference between what is owed and what she's selling it for? So we're going to take that 47,500 and we're going to subtract the 39,200. And that's going to give us 8300. Okay? Okay. So that's the delta, that's the difference. And then also the difference between the payment is 280 minus 750 that's 470 dollar difference okay so you can structure this i'm going to give you two solutions that you can go go with and, uh, to her you can present both of these solutions to her you can present one or the other but this is i'm going to share with you these two solutions all right okay so here's how you do it is Uh, hang on real quick. I'm just going to make sure that I'm giving this so that everyone can see it. All right, so the first solution is, is you're going to give her her $4,000 down. When you do that, it's going to okay. relieve, that's going to give you a remaining balance of $4,300, right? Correct. Okay. So... So what you're going to do is you're going to give her $4,000 down. You're going to take over that monthly payment. So you're going to take over property. So take over subject to, basically, is what it is. So you're now going to, oh, subject. subject to, you're going to take over that $39,200, and you're going to make that $280 a month payment. But wait, she wanted four and a quarter, though. So when we subtract 280 from that four and a quarter, it's $145. So let me get this here. So basically what she wants is she's looking for an extra 100, 145 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would structure, I'm gonna give her the four grand, and then for the next six years, I'm gonna go ahead and take that $4,300, and I'm gonna divide that by six, and or 60 uh six years of 72 months so 4300 divided by 72 months that's going to be 72 equal payments of 60 bucks a month i would i would ask her if she'll do that so divide by 4300 divided by hang on real quick make sure you guys get all of these notes here so divided by 72 months is going to give us $60 a month. So maybe that's not going to be so exciting for her. So what I would then do is take the 4300 and divide that by one, let's just call it 150. Did you use round numbers? 29 months. So a little less, about, so it's about two and a half years. So if we divide... That 40, are you following by, by the way with this? Yeah, I can hear you. No, are you following the math, the logic here? Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot I'm taking in because like, this is completely different from what I was doing. Right, of course it is. It's okay though. So basically what you're doing is you're going to give her four grand, take over the property and the payments, and then you're going to make her 29 equal monthly payments of... 150 and by that time she's cashed out completely she got her equity out of it you've taken over the deal you're done that's one way to do it okay that's uh subject the subject two the other so this is solution number one i'm going to clean it up again so four down Hundred and fifty a month for twenty nine months. 
take sub two. Now the second option, ready for this? I'm ready. All right, man, so solution number two is, we said the difference was a total of $8,300, is you just give her straight up 8,300 bucks. You give her, her, you give her, her full month, her, her full amount of money down, and you take over sub two. Now, what this looks like is if you rent this thing out on on this one. So let's say you're going to be renting it out for seven fifty, and you're going to. Um, you said the mortgage payment was two eighty. So yeah, this is a. I screwed up on my, on my math earlier. Two eighty minus seven fifty, yeah, four seventy. So you're going to be cash flowing this thing four hundred and seventy bucks a month if you do it this this way. And if you go the other way, where you have the two eighty plus the one fifty. That you're only going to be cash, you're going to be cash flowing that one um, three hundred twenty bucks a month. Okay, so so is this without using a tenant buyer? Are you saying just me do the deal? No, 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 no. We're gonna the buyer's gonna fund the entire thing. You got a guy that has a shoebox full of money. If he has twenty grand, I just lost you again. Let's call him back. All right, guys. It's, is this making sense here? I, I offered the neighbor 30 and she said it sounds good. We'll be meeting tomorrow to go over the contract. Good for you, Eric. Uh -huh. All right, cool. So, so no, you got a guy that has a shoebox full of money, man. He's going to fund this entire thing. If he has 20 grand, what's, you know, he can, he can do four grand or he can do 8,300. He can do 10. If he has, if, well, this is what I don't get. If he had a shoebox full of 20 grand, why wouldn't he just pay you 10 grand right then on the spot? Why did, they have to, why did they have to come up with this fancy uh, amortization that scared him away, that he ran away from the deal? Cash in hand is way better than ca future cash promised on the deal. See, it wasn't, it wasn't the down payment that he was worried about. It was the end of the deal that he was worried about. Yeah, yeah, the, the balloon payment, for sure. So this is why you want to take it over sub two. So I'd go back to your, your lady that's sitting there. The house is sitting vacant. She has a mortgage she's paying every single month. So, you know, 280 times 12, she's, you know, every, every year it's costing her $3,300 to have the house just sit there vacant. Doesn't make any sense in the world why she's just sitting there doing that. Okay, great. So, and then what you do is... You go out and you find a buyer. Your buyer has $10,000 down and can afford $750 a month. And you just amortize it over 30 years for the guy. It's a done deal. Now, here's the thing, though, it's going to kind of be kind of – so you're going to have to sell it. You're going to have to sell it so that the monthly payments and the interest aren't so much of an issue. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to sell it for, um, well, how much money do you want to make on the deal? Me, personally, I would take option number one because it's more money in my pocket and I can, I'm sorry, I don't, cash flowing, you know, 320 bucks for 29 months. Versus 470 cash flow. I mean, I'd rather just have the deal fund itself and have more money in my pocket up front, and then after 29 months, have that fall off and get the full cash flow amount. That's how I would do it personally. But if she's if she's going to be hesitant, if, she, if she's going to be like, "Well, I don't want my mortgage out there for so long and all of this stuff," then I would offer her the 4300, and as a way to get her motivated to start moving. And that, that's what the issue was. She, she wouldn't go no lower than the 4000. Okay. And uh, she was saying uh, with the mortgage, you know what I'm saying, uh, being out there and still getting her name, she, she wasn't really comfortable with it, but you know what I'm saying, she took trust with me because of uh, the relationship that I built with her. Right on. And so the relationship you're going to build with her and by giving her money and making monthly on-time payments to her, she's going to trust that you're going to be making that mortgage payment. Because if you don't, guess what? She takes the property back. Exactly. 
So, and I just tell them, I say, look, I don't know how long I'm going to, I don't, I don't know when I'm going to be able to refinance this or when I'm going to be able to take it out of your name. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue making these on-time payments because if not, you're going to get the property right back and I wouldn't have thrown all my money away. And again, I don't know with this market, I got to wait for the market to come back up and, and be able to make it so that we can refinance. And I don't know how long that's going to take. So I can't promise you that it'll be done in, in six years. It could be done in three. It could be done in 12. I don't know. And just, and just let it roll with it on that. I mean, who knows? I mean, most of these guys, if, it, if he's like any of my other guys, he might have this thing paid off in five years. They rat hold how, it. How, do you, how would you, how, how do you like convince them uh, for, for something like that? I know you have to motivate the seller. 